accepted that the climate is always changing, but there is concern that modern changes are not usual. The GISS surface temperature analysis shows that temperatures have risen since 1880, when modern record keeping began. The NOAA chart demonstrates the same changes. It shows that for the period 1880 to 2016, the trend is plus 0.11 degrees Celsius per decade. And the trend is increasing. For the period 1986 to 2016, the trend is plus 0.33 degrees Celsius per decade. And since 2006, the trend is plus 0.38 degrees Celsius per decade. However, there are issues concerning the reliability of current records. This leads some to question the uniqueness of modern warming. This has led to debate concerning temperatures over the past 2,000 years and those of the 20th and 21st centuries. This quote nicely sums up the debate. One position held that medieval warm temperatures reached levels similar to the late 20th century and maintained that the Little Ice Age was very cold, while another position held that past variability was less than present extremes and that the temperature rise of recent decades is unmatched by estimates of past climate. We propose to enter this debate by testing the hypothesis that the trends of temperature increase from 2006 to 2016 is unique or unmatched over the past 2,000 years. But this is not a simple task. There are significant problems to overcome if we are to derive past temperature variability and then compare it to modern variability. This problem is fully recognised by the IPCC, which notes the short time instrumental data has been gathered since 1880 and the wide variety and reliability of proxy data before 1880. These problems were well documented in 1990 by the IPCC. Perhaps the most difficult to overcome is the challenge of comparing like to like. For while there is a constant effort by climate scientists to both collect more data and to improve the statistical methods, this effort itself produces an ever-widening pool of data that has been collected using differing methods. However, there is a way through these problems. We will both clearly define and narrow our focus in order to overcome these issues. We start by defining the unit of measurement we will use for comparison. We adopt the same approach as the NOAA and use the trend in degrees Celsius per decade. There are many sources of data. What should we use for this exercise? This figure is contained in section 5 of the IPCC 2013 report and also appears on the NOAA website. It charts temperature variations over the past 2,000 years. These are the sources of data used. We have selected these datasets 
as input to our analysis. To reinforce our ability to compare like with like, we should select a particular region. As can be seen, there are significantly more sources for the Northern Hemisphere than for the Southern Hemisphere or globally. We therefore select the Northern Hemisphere as the region for comparison. To further narrow our focus, we will also use land as opposed to land and ocean or just ocean. The parameters you see are input to the NOAA graphs used in this video. There are further points to clarify. Temperature data is captured in terms of anomalies against a reference value. However, the reference value used by different sources is not standard. As you can see from this brief comparison. As it happens, this will not be a problem for our exercise. If we look at this chart, we can see why not. Take the case where we want to plot the trend between points A and B. The blue dotted line represents the reference point. If the reference point is changed, Although it will affect the values of A and B, it does not affect the difference in value between A and B, and hence will not affect the trend. We also need to confirm how trend, the unit of measurement, will be calculated. Temperature trends are calculated using a linear regression approach. The same method can be selected on several commercial spreadsheets. If we enter the official NOAA data, we can derive the trend as represented by the red dotted line. We can then specify that the formula for the X and Y coordinates should be displayed. This part of the formula represents the slope or trend per single year. We multiply by 10 to arrive at the trend per decade. For transparency, we will display this formula together with the trend throughout this video. The result we obtain for 2006 to 2016 is 0 0.38 degrees Celsius per decade. This agrees with the trend published by the NOAA. It also agrees with the calculation of the GISS trend. The minor differences reflect the different approaches used by the NOAA and GISS. As one last check, we also use this approach for the entire instrumental period from 1880 to 2016. Again, the result confirms the method. One last thing, the period 2006 to 2016 is inclusive. We are now ready to begin to test the hypothesis. To be clear, we are looking for trends over the past 2,000 years that were equal to or exceeded 0 0.38 degrees Celsius per decade. We go through each data set and will summarize at the end. This is our first data set. The arrow indicates the source of data. The data does not cover all the past 2,000 years, but it does cover years 500 to 2006. For the period 1319 to 1329, we located a trend of 0 0.46. 
a trend of 0 0.39 was identified between 1352 and 1362. The next data set is the 1000 year reconstruction. It covers years 1000 to 1998. Despite the shortened period, we spotted a trend of 0 0.4 between 1647 and 1657. Much more recently, between 1839 and 1849, there was a trend of 0 0.44. This is a more comprehensive data set. It provides data from year 1 to 1979. Very early on, between year 15 and 25, there was a trend of 0 0.55. Between 884 and 894, a trend occurred of 0 0.51. From 1479 to 1489, the trend was 0 0.65. The trend of 0 0.4 occurred 1736 to 1746. We now look at another 1500 year reconstruction. This study covers 558 to 1960, and again, despite the shortened period, several matching trends were located. From 577 to 587, there was an almost exact match of 0 0.38. A trend of 0 0.41 was traced from 831 to 841. From 1151 to 1161, a trend of 0 0.39 took place. This next study covers most of the past 2000 years. It runs from year 0 to 1973. From 1770 to 1780, there was a trend of 0 0.43. We will now navigate back in time to three events that occurred over 30 year periods. From 1642 to 1672, a trend of 0 0.55 took place. A trend of 0 0.53 was spread from 907 to 937 and from 536 to 566, the trend was 0 0.49. We will summarize after two more studies. We now examine an almost complete 2000 year reconstruction. From the year 200 to 1995, From 545 to 555, there is a trend of 0.71. From 847 to 857, a trend of 0.39. From 1037 to 1047, a trend of 0.41 is found. A trend of 0.48 degrees Celsius per decade occurs between 1363 and 1373. From 1543 to 1553, the trend is 0.61. The trend is 0.88 for the period 1817 to 1827. This is our last study. It covers 713 to 1995. From 864 to 874, we find a trend of 0.69. From 951 to 961, the trend is 0.54. From 
from 1717 to 1727, we identified a trend of 0.46. Finally, in quite recent times, from 1837 to 1847, there was a trend of 0.39. It is now time to summarise. We note that in each dataset we were able to identify two or more trends that matched or exceeded the trend of 0.38 degrees Celsius per decade that took place between 2006 and 2016. We also looked for commonality between datasets. The mid-1600s appears in two of the datasets. These periods in the 1300s appear also in two datasets. Four datasets identify trends in the mid-800s. The mid-500s is highlighted in three datasets. Interestingly, three datasets include trends in the recent 1800s. So to conclude, trends equal to or greater than that which occurred between 2006 and 2016 were consistently discovered in the data. It is likely that further research would uncover further instances. This hypothesis must therefore be discarded. It should be replaced with this assertion that is supported by evidence to the effect that the trend of temperature increase between 2006 and 2016 is not unique in the context of the last 2000 years. We agree with this assertion. 